so I will speak uh, today about uh, basically I will give, give a reminder on the theory of perverse sheaves with the uh, orientation on uh, sort of Lagrangian point of view in a different sense. So usually the Lagrangian point of view is that we consider Lagrangian varieties in the cotangent bundle. But uh, sometimes it happens that it's uh, useful to consider Lagrangian varieties in the original complex manifold. So let me start this discussion. So this is basically a reminder which will take the entire lecture today. So we start with a stratifying, stratified space X, which consists of a complex manifold and a set of strata. So we assume that it is smooth. And those are also smooth and locally closed. But the closures may be singular. So it, the picture would be something like this. So then the open thing is a stratum. So this thing is a stratum and the point is a stratum. So x, x alpha bar may be singular. So in this case, we can speak, as uh, Pierre Chapera already started, already explained this morning, we can speak about constructible sheaves, uh, consider cons category constructible of XS, it's the category of S constructible sheaves. When speaking about sheaves, I will speak of sheaves of k vector spaces, where k is a field. So it, it, this is an abelian category, which contains the category of local systems on X. Uh, and it's contained in the category of constructible complexes with the construct of X, which, mean, which means complexes of sheaves such that each cohomology sheave is constructible. So, and, and this means that the restriction to any stratum is a local system. And that's, so what's, what's important is that there, in between there is another category called the category of perverse sheaves, which is included here and here. It's also abelian. That's called S perverse. So and I, I recall the definition. There are several ways of normalizing what do we mean by a perverse sheaf. I want a normalization such that a local system in degree zero is perverse. So there are other normalizations. So let me fix it again. So, so conditions of perversity will be this. So first, that the homology shift of the number i is supported on complex codimension greater or equal than i. So it means that if you make a picture, then in degree zero there is no restriction. So with respect, say, to this uh, uh, drawing, so any, anything can be here. In degree one, it should be on codimension one. So it should be supported on this thing. In degree two, it should be of dimension two, it should be supported on this thing. And in degree three and more, it will be nothing. And in the degree less than zero, it's still anything at, anything at all. 
So this fix, fixes one half of what's known as a T structure. So which means that in particular, if we have a perverse, a, a complex satisfying those conditions and we move it to the left, it will still satisfy those conditions. And the other condition is kind of dual. It says that if we consider a uh, sheaf of cohomology with support, HI with support in X alpha of F equals zero for I less than complex codimension X alpha. So those properties, they imply in particular that the restriction of this complex to the generic stratum is a local system in degree zero. So let me uh, recall the uh, classical properties of this category, including it's the motivation for considering it in the first place. So first, as, as I said, it's abelian category. Also, it is of local nature. It forms, if we consider this for various open parts of X, it forms a stack of categories of local nature. So in this last thing means that if you consider an open set U inside X and associating to it the category perv of U and restriction of S to U, so is a stack of an abelian category. Second, and this property already does not hold for the category of constructible sheaves, so this property doesn't hold here, but there is a duality. This category has a perfect duality, known as the Verdier duality. Which takes, let me denote it like this, F to F star which extends the usual duality for local systems. Mm. So really, it's a, 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 to, uh, using the, if we have standard normalization of Verdier duality, then this is a sheet, it's a subsheet of the Verdier duality. So, but it, it extends the usual unambiguous duality for local systems. So, and the third property is, I again refer to the talk of Pierre Shapira, that if K is the field of complex numbers, then the category of perverse sheaves, perf XS, is equivalent, or I will write an anti equivalence, or anti equivalence category of regular holonomic. dx modulus as m with singular support of m or characteristic variety of m is contained in the union of the closure of closures of conormal bundles. So let me write up here because the most fundamental factor is the solution factor which takes m into our home. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. What's that? Huh? Uh, okay, so, so let's. Uh, yes, let's just say characteristic variety. Yeah, so I don't. Yeah, to 
to be completely so, so this algebraic condition formed by the so it will be r home over d from m of o x it's called the derived solution let's say the solution complex so in in, in this if you take this is the factor, then this is the normalization we get. So that a local system would be in degree zero. So this is a remarkable property because it's, it's, it says that in particular that for a holonomic de demodel, this is a perverse shift. In particular, the cohomology of this complex, they die out like this. So it means that in particular that the functor of solutions, actual home, is exact everywhere outside codimension one. So generically, the correspondence between demodels and solutions is exact. And uh, the fourth property is that there are, it's an, uh, the category is, uh, which is neutron Neuterian and Artinian, so is is category like st of strong finitistic nature, Neuterian and Artinian, and there are m m many instances. of what is known as quiver description. Yes, let me, uh, 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 let me consider the most classical example of such a quiver description. Or maybe uh, let me say, so what does it mean? It means that we w want to identify the category of Perl XS with the category of uh, representations of some quiver with relations. Which means category of certain diagrams of vector spaces like this. Plus some relations in this in this part. Let me consider the most uh, classical example. Suppose X is the unit disk absolute value of z less than 1, psi c. Suppose s is stratification consisting only of 0 and the complement, say d minus 0. So we have something like this. Then the uh, classical description is that uh, per d 0, I'll write it like this, is equivalent to the category of diagrams consisting of two vector spaces and two maps going in opposite ways, say A and B, such that, uh, this, tr that this transformation, I write it here, T psi, which is one minus AB, and write uh, this transformation T phi, which is 1 minus BA, such that T, T phi and T psi are inverse. So as I said, the perverse sheaf is outside on the generic locus is a local system. So this is simply the monodromy of this local system outside uh, around zero. So it's a monodromy. of f restricted to d minus d. So what's, uh, 
what's interesting here, I, I want to recall uh, also the original proof of this or, or construction of this theorem uh, back from the 80s, which is so original original construction. Galiga Granja Mazanov. And they attribute the main idea to Malgrange. So the uh, original construction is based on what I now want to call a Lagrangian skeleton. So in this disk D, let me draw the radius from zero, say to the point one, call this radius K. So it's based on Lagrangian skeleton K. This simply the radius is from zero to one. Uh, so then, if I have a perverse shift F here is a complex. The, the, the very first fact is that the homology with support in this K is zero in degree is not equal not equal to one. So notice so this is quite different from the conditions on cohomology with support in the definition of perverse shifts. In the definition we have everything is complex. So there are here we have different strata of the stratification. And here we have a totally real submanifold which sort of cuts through the strata. It also means uh, that the, the functor which takes f to, a, to the only existing homology, the first one, h1 k of f, is an exact functor from the category of perverse sheaves, which is ki kind of fancy, to the category of ordinary sheaves on the center row. So it's an exact functor of abelian categories. from perf D0 two sheaves and K. And notice that if we want to have a quiver description of our category, if we want to identify this with the category of certain vector spaces, the diagrams as an abelian category, then associating to a perverse shift F any vector space would, of course, will be an exact factor. So a, a, a description like this presupposes that we have many, many, or sufficiently many exact functors to the category of vector spaces. And here we have an exact functor to the category of sheaves. So taking the stocks of this sheaf, we'll get vector spaces. So this, this sheaf is clearly also constructible in the real sense. It has a stock at zero and has a stock everywhere else. So we simply say that phi of phi equals stock. So let me uh, in call this shift R K of F. Just to, show, to simplify notation in a, a little. Stock of R K of F at zero and psi of F equals stock everywhere else. So the map A from phi to psi is simply the structure, uh, is the generalization map of, of, of this sheaf. So the map A from phi to psi is the definition, the generalization map, or the only map which give, makes into the sheaf, the sheaf generalization map for FK of F. So a stock is by definition space of sections on over the small neighborhood. We take this. It's a small neighborhood, but no matter how small, it contains one of those points, which are not zero. So and, and, and a stock here is the same as stock anywhere else. And B is the so-called variation map. Which also can be explained like this. So suppose we have uh, 
we, we have a class in local cohomology, then we can what's the local cohomology? Is the quotient of sections here plus sections here over the image of the sections in the, in the big disk. So if you represent this as like, like this, as s comma zero, then when we sort of go away all the way here, and, and this represents me then a class of cohomology with some form. That's the variation there. So it, 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 it's important here, uh, by the way, so that if this is an equivalence, then both of them are not only exact functors, which uh, is clear from this point of view, but they also commute with Verdier duality. So let me so, so, so call it important. So, so uh, f phi of f, um, psi of f, defined like this, they commute with duality. So in a way, it's, it's more than a sheaf. So what happened here, so we use the sheaf structure to get one part of the diagram. And the other part also follows, we, we can say that let's do the same for the dual sheaf. So the whole thing is slightly more than a sheaf, which is also an interesting phenomenon. But uh, in fact, one can uh, choose this skeleton, as I now want to call it, in a different way. And then we can get different uh, descriptions of the same category or, or apply this later to other categories. So, alternative description. this sort of square root of the previous one. So instead of uh, a radius, let's, let's do this. Let's consider k to be the, the diameter from minus one to zero to one. Then we get again the same purity property. Let's call this the purity property. Take k so and we get a diagram so, so then we, we, we get a sheaf on this interval which will have three stocks stock at zero stock at plus one and stock at negative one so we'll get diagrams like this is zero E plus and minus both the two maps in both directions. So gamma plus delta plus, gamma minus delta minus, plus conditions. The conditions will be like this, that uh, gamma plus delta plus is the identity. Gamma minus delta minus is the identity. And if you do gamma plus delta minus, plus delta minus, or gamma minus, delta plus, so this would go from E minus to E plus, this would go from E plus to E minus, E minus are isomorphisms. So this is the category of such diagrams is equivalent to the category of those diagrams. But here, so what happens is those, those isomorphisms are sort of half monodromous. So, so this would be one, from here to here, and this would be the other, from here to here. So let's call them half monodromous. So delta plus are the maps, up, so one can say it in two ways. One say, let's do it for the dual ones and dual ones. 
So this is a, a little cheating because you don't have the, uh, the feel that uh, something is happening. Uh, and another thing is, um, so let me just say it a, a little more. Uh, I did not uh, get into the somehow full details of this construction, so and, and of that one. So what's interesting here that uh, given such a diagram or such a diagram is there, one can recover the sheaf canonically, and one can do this in terms of uh, a version of Cousin resolution. So that means, so a perverse sheaf is a complex of sheaves. So we can write an explicit complex of sheaves representing F. And for this, let's do this. Uh, let's consider our disk or our complex plane with zero. Let's consider the two parts. Let's consider M Z greater equal than zero. Consider M Z less than e equal to zero. And inside here we have R. So we, we, we can simply re replace this disk intersected with this. So it intersect disk. So what we can do, we can consider, uh, maybe, uh, let, let me call this, this part, uh, so u plus, this is called u minus, and this is simply r, which is u plus, intersected with u minus. So what we can do, we can consider our, let's consider H zero. Let me H zero of U plus, H zero U plus F plus H zero U minus F goes to H one R of F. So, so, so this would be a, a complex which will be isomorphic to F. And D, D plus and uh, delta plus of the minus will be the, the boundary of, 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 of sorry, uh, support will be, yes, in U minus. So more precisely, we should consider the embedding. So J plus is embedding from U plus to, uh, to, to, to D plus minus. And so G zero is embedding from minus one, one to D. To D. So, so then we, we have algebraically, we have J plus uh, factorial J plus star F plus J minus factorial J minus star F will get into J zero factorial J zero star F shifted by one. So this is the, the canonical map. And in this case, it will reduce to this explicit complex of sheaves. And the maps delta plus and delta minus will be uh, uh, the corresponding uh, components of those maps on the level of stocks. So the conditions can be read of uh, this complex. Okay, so now uh, moving to this side. So this suggests a certain general principle. And the, and the principle is that perverse sheaves, they know something about uh, Lagrangian skeletons. So let me write it as a principle because the exact limits of its validity are not clear. But it is, it is interesting to see particular manifestations. And, and I'm sure there are, uh, sh should be some interesting general results in this direction. I'll explain what is known in this direction of validity. Okay. 
So if a possibly single Uh, now, I said Lagrangian, but there is, a, 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 in fact, an interplay between Lagrangian and totally real submanifolds. Yes, la, la, yes la, 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 Lagrangian, which would imagine some Keller metric. So, so let me say here, so, so I'll explain here at the board the relation between Lagrangian and totally real. Because now everybody knows Lagrangian, and the very concept of totally real needs an explanation. So, but let me write here, totally real. K inside X. So, and uh, let me just say the totally real is like Rn in, inside C. Yeah. So, that is the first. The first. Or, uh, more better, better saying, suppose V is a complex vector space. So, it's a, it's a complex vector space. So a subspace, a lambda, so of, of dimension n. So d d d dimension n. So, so lambda is a real gra in real Grassmann variety of n v is called totally real. If lambda doesn't meet its i, or and let me say lambda plus i lambda is equal to V. So now if V has a Hermitian metric, H, which we write H equals G plus I omega. So this is symmetric. This is anti-symmetric. Then, so it's a, then it's a, it's a symplectic form, and then a, any Lagrangian sub, subspace with respect to the symplectic form is totally real. So let me make more space. So, so lambda Lagrangian for omega, then totally real. So in this way, the Lagrangian Grassmannian, Lagrangian of phi omega, is embedded into Grassmann totally real, let's say, I like R, R, totally real of M, V. So this is and simply, this condition is open. When we say that something totally real, it's a generic condition. A generic subspace will be totally real. So it's an open part of the Grassmannian. So it's non, non compact. Non compact. It's open into G real. And this is a compact. Is, 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 so Lagrangian subspaces form a compact form, a compact homotopy equivalent form. So and similarly, a submanifold is totally real if, if its tangent space is totally real at every point. In particular, if it's Lagrangian, then it's totally real. So anyway, I continue this. If a possibly singular totally real uh, K meets, meets any X alpha in a totally real uh, K with X alpha, then yes, yes, yeah, to, to, in, in a smooth, yeah. Actually, th th that's not not really necessary, because uh, it, it may it may be so, uh, s sort of absorbed into refining stratification. I'll consider an example later. So anyway, then the, the, the two two things uh, very often hold. Hold first of all that cohomology uh, with support in K in degrees not equal to zero equals zero for every f in curve xs. And this implies that cohomology of degree n 
is an exact function. And once we have an exact functor, it's very natural to try to use it to construct an explicit description of the category of perverse sheets. Property number two, that taking any, st any stock of this functor commutes with duality. as a functor per x s. This is an exact factor, but moreover, it's commutes, commutes with duality. So this means that in particular, the uh, in addition to the shift data, there is a dual co-shift data. So, th so this, because we can do it for, uh, for the dual shift. So again, let me denote this by R K of F. So the shift data for R K of F dual dual uh, make R K of F in addition to being a shift into something uh, into something which we uh, which we can just informally call a Cauchy. So altogether is something like like a by shift in, uh, to to compare between uh, algebras, co-algebras, and bi-algebras. And in fact, there is a class, there is a class of stratifications where it's even more, uh, more pronounced. But I, I probably won't get it, uh, get to it today. So this principle, uh, it's, it holds for the case when, uh, when K is a smooth variety. with a smooth, totally real manifold, and it follows from study of uh, the model of hyperfunctions. Let me erase this. So it's known for, it's known for K smooth. Follows from the work of Lebo, and more general work of Honda and Pierre and Chaperat. Study of hyperfunctions. Of hyper. Study of X, X to hyperfunctions. Let me maybe explain a little bit what is the role of hyperfunctions here. So that in this example, we basically have our skeleton consisted of real line ins inside complex line. So in our construction, so what have we done? We, we took F to H1 R of F. Now if F is a shift of solutions of a holonomic demodule, if F is our home, from D, from N to O, then this is simply our home over D from F to H1 with support in R of OC. And this is the famous shift of hyper, uh, shift of hyper functions. Say it again. Oh, yes, 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 home from M to the shift of hyperfunctions. It's called so B, B, the classical notation is B sub R. So here the statement that there are no higher, no other cohomology simply means that hyperfunctions, there are no higher X. So our statement, so purity means
convinced that x greater than 0 over the shift of d from m to br equals 0 for every m. Now here, it, it is, actually, it is true for any harmonic d model on c. So that's a, it is not true that, so the first thought would be that this model is injective on the category of D models, or in the category of D models, but it isn't. But nevertheless, so this is the essence of the statement and similar res results by Lebo and, Ho and Honda Shapira, they, they proceed in, 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 a similar na in a similar vein. So if uh, we have this hypersurface K, th this totally real submanifold K, then it has, there is, there is a purity, first of all, there is already some purity here, which is sort of the prototype of everything, that H not equal to one, with respect support in R of OC equals zero. So that's the pr general result of Saturn, which lies at the origin of theory of hyperfunctions. And similarly for Rn inside Cn, and similarly for a totally real submanifold that has been generalized many times. But what's more important is not just this. So first of all, there is this purity. And second, there is also a purity on the level of homological algebra over the ring of differential operators. So now, if I want to discuss this a little more, then for this K, so the first part is is very general. So the fact, the fact that H not equal to N, the support in K of O C N equals zero, it is very general. Has been has been proved in quite wide generality. So, and uh, uh, however, the analysis, of the corresponding analysis of X, so that means that there is some, something called the shift of hyperfunctions on this K. There's always, there is, there is a very good concept of hyperfunctions supported on a totally real or Lagrangian variety, even if it's singular. There is a, it, there is a spirity, there is only one shift, which is very interesting. Uh, but, the, the, the corresponding analysis of homological algebra in the category of D models in general has not been, uh, has not been un understood. Nevertheless, it's a very tempting uh, principle. So let me see, uh, yeah, let me consider a, a few examples. So, so far I just discussed two examples corresponding to the disk. Let me consider two more examples. Suppose uh, X is a complex manifold, Cm, and K is a real submanifold, Rm. Suppose uh, uh, our stratif stratification is given by an arrangement of hyperplanes. So let me say it like this. H is an arrangement. Rm. So then the stratification is by complexifications, by complexification of, of those arrangements. It's called S. It's a stratification given, let's put it like this, generic parts of complexified file, but not hyperplanes hyper itself, but also the intersections. Let's call, let me call them flats. Flats. So then uh, we, we have s s studied this case with uh, Vadim Shechtman. So, 
So first of all, uh, the, the purity holds. This is a particular case of those results. It, it can also be proved in an elementary way. So purity holds. It can also be proved directly. And we, ha we have an explicit description that we can uh, upgrade this to an explicit description of the category of perverse sheaves. So per XS is equivalent to the cat category of diagrams. And the diagrams would be like this. Uh, that, so it requires some combinatorial terminology. So in the real space, if you have an arrangement in the real space, then first of all, this decomposes the real space into certain chambers. And there are walls between the chambers. And there are sort of faces of the walls. So let's call, let's call a face any of those things. So it's basically the real stratification of RL. So the, the, there are many faces. So in particular, the, 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 even the open stratum the open part, so to say, the complement of the hyperplanes, is the union of many faces. So in the diagram, diagrams will consist of vector spaces E, C, for any face C. Moreover, then when there is an inclusion of, so, so in particular, there will be a vector space for this one, vector space for this half line, for this half line, for this chamber, and the vector space for zero here. The, the, the diagrams will be like this. So for any inclusion, let me write C prime less or equal than C, which means C prime is contained in the closure of C. There will be maps from E C prime to E C. This will be gamma C prime C will be delta C prime C, such that there are th th three conditions. First, first is transitivity. So uh, as in the previous case, those gamma maps are simply the shift uh, sh shift data for. Uh, the cohomology with support. So let me just say that. So gamma, gamma C prime C describe Hn and Rn of n. Well, so it will have stocks at every face. So it will be generalization maps for inclusion of the faces. So they will be transitive. So gamma C prime C transitive. And delta C C prime also transitive. They will be dual too. So again, it's a manifestation of the fact that we have more than a sheaf. It's like a bi sheaf. But there is no well known concept of a bi sheaf. It may be very interesting to uh, formulate this concept similar to the concept of a bi algebra. They're, they're transitive. Part B. Uh, so, uh, is that uh, if you go in uh, in this way, from the bigger to the smaller, you get an identity map. So what does it mean? It means that the smaller ones are bigger. If you go like this, smaller ones are bigger. And the biggest one is E0. The biggest one is corresponding to E0. So let, let me just say it again, the delta. C, C prime, gamma, C prime, C equals identity. And this means uh, that if I have any two cells which are not necessary, two faces, which are not necessarily compatible at all, that I can take C in between and going this and go this. And so exists maps, so let me call phi A, B. From any EA to any EV, just going through 
any of them, in, which in particular, that can be zero. Uh, then uh, property C is what's important condition that uh, if we have three, if we have three cells, A, say this is B, this is B, and this is C, so if A, B, C are collinear cells, simply means that there is a straight line passing through a point A, a point B, and a point C, then, yes, B, the first of all, it's in the, in the middle of the interval, yes. It, it, it's, a, it's an ordered concept. So, so then, uh, phi AC equals phi, uh, phi uh, BC, phi AB. And the fourth uh, concept D is that if we have, uh, let's say like this, if we have such a situation that we have A, B, A prime in some flat. So if, so, so it's the condition of some sort of half monodromous being uh, invertible. And the setting is this. So, that, so this lies in some flat, so in some flat, Flat, uh, so in a flat L of dimension dimension D, suppose A A prime are d-dimensional, and the wall between them, so and B, the wall between them. Which means this by one dimension less. So then the, con the condition phi, uh, or, or I can write phi, or I can write gamma, I can write delta, I can write gamma B A prime, delta A B is invert. So those are ex explicit conditions which uh, describe uh, the, categ the category of uh, perverse sheaves. Let me just make uh, a little comment here, or maybe I'll put a comment on this board. So let's have some comments. So E0 equals E0 of F is the biggest. So contains all, all EC by those embeddings. So if this comp composition is identity, then this, uh, this is an embedding and this is a projection. So in this space, E0 is simply, uh, is, the, is the space of because the uh, arrangement is so topologically the same in the neighborhood of any point as it's in, in, in the bigger neighborhood of the point. So it's simply the space of hyper, hyper uh, function solutions. This is a global space HN, HN, or let me say uh, HN of RN, HN in RN of CNF. So uh, it can also be said that the space of hyper, hyper function solutions is that home, home over D CN from M to BRN. If M is our home or D, sorry, if F is our home over D from M to O, so, so this is the space of actual space of hyperfunction solutions. So this is the, the first comment, and the, the second comment is that 
for uh, n equals one, we get the description which I uh, already mentioned before. So for n equals one, so we have R, this only arrangement of hyperplanes in R is consists of one hyperplane zero, so we get get the we get the description. Zero e plus e minus. So, and this, as I said, is, is the space of hyper, uh, hyper function solutions, home D, home D. Actually, I probably need to even to erase this simple home D from M to BR. So, and com uh, compared to the standard description with phi and psi. So this space E0 is, has the same dimension, so has same dimension as phi plus psi, but is not canonically identified with, with, with the direct sum. There are two identifications, which is none of them is better than the other. And this uh, identification of dimensions was, in fact, or can be found already in Kashiwara's master thesis of 1971. So this, this fact even though the description was not known at that time, so it was in terms of a differential operator. So if, if you write equa equation of the form x to the p d over dx to the q plus lower order terms, then this would be p plus q. Okay, so it is this example with the hyperplanes. Uh, let me consider uh, one more example. Uh, Two, suppose X is a topological surface, but let me say it's a complex curve. So what we really need of it is an oriented surface. Possibly with boundary. Or let me not let me just say it without without boundary for now. Okay, so then a datum of a stratification is simply a finite subset n inside S of points where the perverse sheaves can have singularities. So suppose K inside X is any graph. Oh, yes, 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 sorry, yes, 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 X. Uh, K would be any graph. So it may pass or may not pass through the marked points. It may pass, may contain them in the middle. It may contain them at the end points of vertices. It may contain them like this. So the purity is true. So in particular, this example for n equals one can be generalized in another direction. So in one direction, we, we saw that's the simplest instance of uh, an arrangement of hyperplanes. But now, on the, if we start, if you look at it differently, I started from this example, then I looked at this example, and then the next natural example would be three uh, uh, edges coming out of a vertex. So, so we can have an, uh, yet another, so yet another, that's called fractional description or fractional spin description. So 
of of the category of perverse shapes on a disk. So again, was obtained joint with shaft. So in the disk, we now take this corolla. So we take K equals KN, the N valent corolla. So the, and then if we do the same thing, we do the homology we support, we have a diagram which has the shape of this graph. So we have diagrams of the form E0 would be E1, would be E2, would be E3, Em would be diagrams like this. Uh, again, let me denote them, say gamma 1, delta 1, gamma 2, delta 2, uh, would be gamma 3, delta 3. So we have such diagrams with conditions. And let me call those conditions for future reference n cyclic relations. So as before, we have the condition that gamma i delta i is the identity identity of e i. Another condition would be that gamma i plus one delta i from e i. E i plus one is an isomorphism. When i plus one is taken modulo n, i plus one modulo n. And third condition is any other, so gamma j delta i equals zero otherwise. So for n equals one, we, we, it doesn't specialize exactly to what what we had, but for n equals two, it gives precisely this description, and it can continue like this. Okay. So now let me uh, continue th 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 this. Uh, a little bit in, in the following way. Now let me, in the rest of the hour, let me consider additional features of the category of uh, perverse sheaves for, uh, for this setting. So, because this will be used later in the third talk when I will uh, uh, do, do some ca categorical analogs of these constructions additional features of XM is okay. So in the first uh, feature I want to emphasize is uh, to borrow Maxim's terminology is Lagrangian collapse for perverse sheets. terminology, which I, I appropriate, sort, sort of reverse, reverse engineer it in this particular elementary case. So this means that all the geometry collapses to Lagrangian skeleton. And I explain what is Lagrangian skeleton in this case and what exactly collapses on this skeleton.
So a, a Lagrangian skeleton would be a graph. Uh, in this case, so Lagrangian skeleton was a graph. K inside X. So I, I assume that the surface uh, may have a boundary. Uh, yeah, let me let me just say with, with, possibly with a boundary. So, so graph, which, uh, let's assume that it doesn't meet the boundary. And first, that it's a graph is spanning for x. Which means it's a skeleton of this in a topological sense. Means x is homotopy equivalent to a small neighborhood of k. Or maybe we can just equally say to k itself, to a small neighborhood. In particular, it's not compact. Yes, that's why I made this con uh, uh, correction. Yeah. Two. Okay. So a picture would be something like this. Well, And second, it contains all the marked points. So it, it may pass to this somehow, marked points, to this marked point, to this marked point. So this means that uh, sort of the entire geometry, so the, our geometry consists of a, a surface uh, together with a perverse sheaf with some singular points on this surface. So this data sort of say that everything should collapse on this uh, situation. So now notice that in this case, K has a well-known ribbon structure. So K, K has a ribbon structure. Which means for every vertex V, the, the half edges incident to V have a cyclic order of N. I call it NV equals N. So half edges because sometimes it may happen that the edge sort of terminates at the same vertex and we should count them separately. So half edges. Through V. Through v. So it has a cyclic order or it is equipped with a cyclic order. It becomes a ribbon graph. It's a combinatorial uh, object. Yeah. Let me I, I assume for the, the uh, for the purpose of the next statement that uh, what's called it n consistent entirely of the vertices of k. So I assume we, we can add them if you want. So I assume. N is the vertices of K. Then, uh, but w f for uh, a ribbon graph K, we can uh, we can uh, as associate a category depending only on the ribbon graph. So the category P of K. So it will consist, again, of double diagrams like this, except labeled by vertices and edges of K. So it consists of, of diagrams. So first of all, for every vertex would be the corresponding vector space EV, or even edge would be corresponding vector space E sub E. And whenever we have a such a situation, there will be E, V, this will be E, 
Delphi would be maps uh, gamma and delta, gamma say V E, V E, uh, satisfying the cyclic relations, satisfying relations like this for every for every uh, vertex. Relations for each vertex. Now, uh, the, the, the statement I want to formulate is theorem again due to John Schechten. So that would be the assumption first for this. And if k is as above, as above spanning graph containing n, so it equals to n, if k is as above, then so first of all, the category pair of x n is equivalent to the category p of k, so that the sort of non-abelian collapse that perverse shifts are described in terms of the graph. And this depends on the k only. And second b, for actual perverse shift in this category, so we form as before the corresponding uh, shift of cohomology with support, which leads on k, so let, let r k of f be h1 So this data is obtained from this uh, double representation by considering only arrows going from V to on the gamma vertices that they would give us this shift. So then, then cohomology of shift K with coefficient in this RK of F is the same as H I plus one of uh, X Modulus is a boundary with coefficients in it. So and th th this statement will be sort of be categorified later uh, in the appearance of the Fukai category and the localized Fukai category as uh, originally suggested by Maxim. Let me um, discuss two more features of, uh, of perverse shifts and curves. So first I discuss Lagrangian collapse, but now I want to consider a different type of collapse. So something was collapsing, here something was collapsing to a Lagrangian variety. Now what I want to do is to collapse Lagrangian varieties themselves, or call them Lagrangian contractions. Still, again, it's for curves. So being Lagrangian here simply meaning, means being a graph. Let's call this part functoriality with respect to Lagrangian contractions. Lagrangian. Yes, 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 yes. So it's not clear. So it doesn't. Of, of, yes, yes. So, so somehow my motivation so it, it was to sort of relate perverse shifts on a manifold X with uh, uh, Fukai category of the same manifold X and not at the cotangent bound. So that they know something about this. this So let's consider the following situation. Again, let me consider, say, a, an algebraic curve or a Riemann surface, uh, x, and inside, consider a graph, which is a tree. Suppose L inside x 
is an embedded, is again, a two dimension, with an embedded tree. Then we can collapse this tree to a point called X mod L. So just contract L to a point. So then, if you do this, it will still be a topological surface. X mod L is still, it's, it's no longer a complex manifold or in an obvious way, but it's a topological surface. So in particular, one can speak about perverse sheaves on a topological surface. So for in two dimensions or in one complex dimension, as we said, what is, what's a stratification? It's, a, say, a complex curve with a bunch of points. The condition of being perverse is simply a topological condition. You have an oriented a surface, and uh, the situation near each point doesn't really appeal that, that much to the complex structure. So if you have an oriented surface with a bunch of points, it's okay. So in the X model is again a topological surface. And we want to have the following fact to, to, to proposition if you want, then if F is a perverse shift, perf Xn, then its direct image is again perverse. So it lies in uh, X mod L here. So in particular, it will have its uh, new spaces of uh, uh, nearby and vanishing cycles, which will be sort of obtained by certain gluing or, or merging together the spaces which we had before. Yes, 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 yes. The fiber is contractible. It, 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 it is. It's not, it's not constant on the fiber, yeah, but it's a tree. The fiber is a tree. If you contract a graph which is not a tree, they will not get a manifold. But if you contract a graph which is a tree, it's a manifold. So we can speak about perverse sheaves on that manifold. So let me work out an example, or just discuss an example. Well, suppose we have two points. Points, say. W1 and W2. This is L. So then uh, the perverse shift would have data. We'd have one phi would be some psi and another phi would be. We say A1, B1 would be A2, B2. And this will produce, produce for us 1.W. So it would, would have uh, the same psi, and the new phi will be, will be sort of, we can say it's phi 1 plus phi 2, but the maps A and B will not be uh, completely trivial. So what we'll have, it would be like this. Uh, so it's, it's a new phi. It would go like this. If you write psi, I can write phi 1. I write the same psi. So here the first map, the b's will be the same, but be b1, b2, and here would be a1. This would be a1 minus a1, b2, b1, a2. So and this will give me a and b. So what we have is 1 minus a b equals uh, 1 minus a1, b1, 1 minus a2, b2. So there is this functoriality with respect to contract or, or to contract several separate, tre separate trees into, into points. And a good, so the reason I brought it up is that it is, uh, this functoriality is a decade, can provide the sort of shift theoretic version and understanding of the uh, Foucault's idle category associated to 
which I'll, I'll discuss later. Uh, so let me just say it like this. Suppose we have, uh, so it, 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 it's slightly modified construction when we have one point on the boundary, but suppose, suppose uh, X is a disk and we have several points and we, can, and, and we uh, assemble them into a tree. So, so then, then we, we can collapse, we can collapse, collapse L into a point. And so the new, the new, new phi is, is, is a decategorified version. of the fukai Zeibel category, which I'll discuss in the third talk. Oh, okay, so and, and, so and, and the last uh, f f feature of the construction of the part three, let me call it the real blow up and the sub -off sheet. So what we can do, we can start, we can start with a surface with a bunch of marked points and we can replace them by each of those points, we can replace by little circles, circles of direction. That's called X, and this would be the real blow up, and X. Let's call it projection Q. So, and, uh, and over any point X, so X in N will, will lie the circle of directions. Now any perverse sheaf on X with singularities of N, it gives some local systems of vanishing cycles. Uh, uh, let me give local systems of nearby and vanishing cycles. So F of XN, local systems. Oh, sorry. The, the, canonical way, the canonical way of writing those phi and psi would be a local system, psi and phi w on S1 w. So, and in particular, there is a map called A underline w, and there is a B in the other side. But we can use A, so can use the A w to glue an R, constru an R constructible sheaf So it was a perverse shift, but we can go an actual shift, let's call it G of F, on a uh, blow, uh, blow, up, blow up and R and X. So on this circle, so on each individual those little circle, S1, S1, W, it is phi W. So on the, co on the complement, And, and the complement is the same. The complement of those circles is the same as complement of the points here. And this complement is simply the generic stratum in X. So our perverse sheaf is a local system. And the complement is local system. F, X minus N. And gluing data is A. So in this way, we get an exact functor. So let me now move it here.
So this, in this way, we get the exact formula. Uh, let's call this G from perf xm to ordinary sheaves on law. So this, fun this functor loses information because it, it ignores the maps in the other direction. So it was used in Stokes theory by uh, Sabah and other people. So I think my, probably by Sabah first. So, and I mention this because uh, in the categorical setting, it's, th th this is more important because the relation between A and B, there is a, it, there is a relation. It was suggested by Maxine that some, something like this may be useful in describing uh, perverse shoppers in this case. So, and I'll get to this uh, next time.